Welcome students to this presentation on uh, media literacy. As we know, uh, there are very many reasons why media literacy is important. And one of that is the uh, amount of uh, media content we consume on a daily basis. And there have been people uh, who have said that when we are not working and when we are not sleeping, the majority of the time we are with the media. So uh, the, the sheer volume or the sheer exposure that we have to media and the uh, possible impact that media has or uh, the uh, possible uh, usages that media can be put to makes it very, very important for us to empower audiences or to empower consumers with media literacy. So uh, media literacy, basically, there are uh, very many different ways of looking at it, but the uh, common uh, definition or, or the uh, one, one area where most of us agree with are these uh, four points of media literacy that media literacy is the ability to, first of all, access information. So you must have access to information. Access itself is a part of literacy. You, if you do not have access to all kinds of information, then probably you will not be media literate. Uh, and analyze information. So we'll talk about the various strands of analysis, but you must be able to analyze those messages itself. Not just analyze, but also to evaluate it uh, in terms of uh, various criteria that we will uh, discuss in a moment's time. So it's not just uh, about accessing, analyzing, and evaluating, but also communicating it in, in uh, a wide variety of forms. So media literacy is also, uh, in some sense, involves the sense of advocacy or a sense of being able to create messages either on your mobile phone or on the digital platform or on other platforms. So it includes that particular uh, part of uh, uh, media production as well. So it is accessing, analyzing, evaluating, and communicating communicating messages in a wide variety of forms. So what is the goal of uh, media literacy? Its goal is to create informed, autonomous citizens, citizens who can decide for themselves, citizens who have the power to question the information they receive, appreciate their aesthetics when it's there and develop self-esteem and competence and have a sense of advocacy. So the last point where we spoke about communicating messages is about competence and having a sense of advocacy. When we find out that certain uh, tools or certain tricks or certain techniques have been employed by people to uh, produce fake messages, for example, then we uh, have the self-esteem and the competence and the self-confidence to uh, take out these messages to the people. So that is why media literacy is such an important uh, uh, tool for all of us. So uh, media literacy, is, as I was telling right at the beginning, is important because of the sheer volume of uh, uh, media exposure. So whether it's television or films or uh, these days, you know, on, on uh, various social media, it's, it's unprecedented. And the amount of digital information is something that is growing at an exponential scale, to repeat a cliche. And it is ever increasing. It's not a constant. It is increasing. And it's increasing almost at a geographic uh, ge or a geometric uh, progression. Also, it's not only about news, but also about popular culture messages. So all the popular uh, uh, um, uh, culture content that we consume, it could be general entertainment channels, it could be other kind of entertainment. They are also very important and potent agents of socialization. So that's another reason why media literacy is so very important. So media literacy uh, focuses on the critical analysis of not just news, but also popular culture. And these days, the new media and uh, social media. So uh, that's why uh, uh, media literacy is, uh, is so very important in the digital uh, ecosystem that we are in, in at present. So the major goal of uh, media education in, uh, uh, you know, in, in general and media literacy in particular is to help the recipients of mass communication. Although the term mass communication itself is under a question mark because we are not dealing with uh, the mass audiences that we are so used to uh, in, in the uh, era before the digital media, but uh, you know, both mass uh, communication and also uh, those uh, fragmented audiences. So the major goal of uh, media literacy is to help the recipients or to help the consumers of this information become active, free participants, rather than being just static, passive, and subservient to the images. And that's what the logic of mass society was that uh, audience is uh, passive and they're subservient and they're static but we'll find out that uh, audience is not always uh, uh, static they do make uh, a sense of information all by themselves 
so uh, that's why uh, one of the major objectives of media literacy is to create active free informed participants in the production in the process of uh, uh, consuming media uh, content and that's also important because much of media content is uh, polysemic what it means is that it potentially has different levels of possible meaning the same content might mean something very different to me it might mean something different to somebody with a different set of experiences it might mean uh, uh, different to somebody with with a different uh, uh, set of uh, ideologies so it depends the same media content might mean different to different people so it could be a, a, a candlelight dinner that could mean a lot of things to a lot of people it could mean uh, in places where there is no electricity it could mean uh, you know some some uh, some kind of a bad experience so everybody draws uh, meaning or they draw their personalized meaning in the context of their own experiences and associations and that is very important Me me meaning is not uh, in the content but also in the individual how we make sense of the content so it is not always on the side of of the people who are producing content but also on the side of people who are consuming content and that is important because there are a lot of these cognitive processes and in a different in a different video have uh, I've spoken of these cognitive biases or how uh, for example uh, storytelling works uh, uh, as 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 a cognitive tool but it's important to uh, emphasize and it's important to realize that meaning is not always universal and it's not always situated only in the content but how the individual uh, makes meaning of that particular content so uh, i'm just uh, uh, going to uh, flip through some of these important uh, articles uh, uh, that have come out recently which i have used to uh, some of which i have used to prepare this presentation as well so this is a very recent one and it's uh, it was uh, it was printed in this uh, very uh, prestigious uh, journal the american behavioral scientist in in 2019 and this was about uh, does media literacy help identification of fake news and they talk of other uh, literacies also and i will talk of those literacies also in this presentation then there is this very important uh, and this is very easily available on the internet this is on approaches to instruction and teacher education in media literacy and this is by one of the uh, most prominent scholars of uh, uh, media literacy rene hobbs and uh, there are quite a few uh, articles and books that uh, she's written uh, on media literacy so uh, uh, lot of some of the material that i'll be presenting today is uh, is from works like this uh, then again another person uh, um, sonia livingstone she is a very very uh, uh, accomplished uh, media researcher and scholar from the london school of economics and political science and uh, this is uh, uh, the uh, article that i have uh, used for uh, today's presentation as well this is on media literacy and the challenge of new information and communication technologies and then there is uh, another one in the uh, international uh, in the journal of communication by rene hobbs so uh, as i was suggesting literacy is not just about the basic abilities of reading and writing in common terms is the capacity to understand and perform those co complex functions and i've spoken of those uh, complex uh, functions uh, at, at the beginning of this presentation so whether you are able to perform those uh, 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 perform and understand those uh, complex function is uh, what is important for literacy it's not just the ability of uh, uh, reading or or consuming content or being able to uh, read or consume content and it can have very many different forms we have something known as information literacy we have uh, uh, computer literacy of course media literacy is the, what we're going to talk about today we have news literacy we have network literacy digital literacy is uh, so very important these days and we even have the concept of uh, health literacy these days uh, especially in the backdrop of the covid-19 pandemic about uh, what is healthy and what is not healthy or or how does a virus work or how does a vaccine work and uh, so on and so forth so uh, we understand that it's not only about uh, the knowledge of uh, these things but a more complex uh, understanding and a more complex uh, ability to uh, uh, perform those uh, tasks uh, as part of uh, uh, literacy so it's not just about uh, uh, the uh, as i said um, very very uh, uh, rudimentary knowledge about uh, uh, all these things but in a greater uh, with with some greater uh, sophistication these are the things that we're going to talk about 
so uh, as uh, so how does it uh, uh, encourage active citizenship we've just spoken about uh, active citizenship or how does it help create that active audience so because it encourages a careful focus on the critical analysis of news journalism and entertainment media messages and in uh, especially in schools or uh, when uh, people are being to told about uh, media literacy uh, in the initial stages it's often very easy and very convenient to concentrate on the television commercials because they are short and because the persuasive messages are so very distinct there and because it's easy to identify uh, uh, all the other elements that we'll be talking about so it's very easy to just have a critical analysis to have a close analysis of these media messages and what are the thought processes that go behind that and we will be talking about those uh, things uh, what, what to look behind uh, those things in, in greater detail in today's presentation so uh, what are the elements of media literacy this is from uh, art silverblatt's article uh, of uh, companion of 2008 and uh, he speaks of uh, seven elements of media literacy i have just uh, kind of adapted uh, uh, some of it uh, for, for today's class. So uh, first of all, it helps us develop a critical thinking skill, which uh, 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 helps us to have an independent judgment about media content. It's not about others telling me about the media content, but uh, me as a uh, empowered citizen or me as, as uh, somebody who's been empowered with media literacy, to have independent judgments about media content, about its quality, about the persuasive content, or, or about the strategies, etc. So the first and the most important element of media literacy is to develop this critical thinking skill among the audience members. And also an understanding of and respect for the power of media messages. And again, as I said, this is a very layered kind of a construct. It's, uh, and there are, there are so many different ways of looking at it that uh, uh, come to think of it, media itself does not have any formal powers. I mean, it, it cannot uh, uh, put somebody to, uh, to jail, it cannot uh, uh, reward somebody, etc., etc. But it has a lot of power of uh, uh, putting uh, uh, these things in the public agenda or putting uh, certain things in the public domain. And there are very many different ways in which the uh, media messages have that power. And one of the power is the third person effect. And what is the third person effect? It assumes that I am not affected by the media, but other people are affected by the media. So as, as I'm saying, these are just very simple ways of suggesting it. There are so many other ways of uh, uh, realizing that there, there, is, there is a very important uh, role of uh, you know, the power of media messages. So it, it could be about, uh, uh, as I said, uh, uh, related to one's own confirmation or what, what, what one own uh, wants to believe or does not want to believe. And that's why all these biases come in. I will talk about these biases also in greater details. But one reason why a lot of these fact checking uh, initiatives do not work is because people who consume that content uh, assume that uh, that content is true or they, they, they find that particular content uh, to be true because that, that matches or that resonates with their belief systems. So this uh, understanding of the sophisticated power of media messages, it might not be very stark, it might not be very direct, it might only be uh, used to maybe uh, reaffirm or reconfirm what you already believe in. So there are very many different ways in which uh, media exercises power on us or media messages uh, have that power. So that understanding is very important for all of us, that when we uh, see a media message, we must be uh, uh, cognizant of the power that it might have. It may not uh, uh, affect me immediately, but it might be affecting other people. So there is, there is uh, this realization is important. The awareness of the impact on the media, on the individual, and on the society. So uh, this is just an extension of that. It could be having some kind of a, a, a collective impact on, on, on the society as well. So uh, one, uh, and this is what we discussed even when I was talking about news framing, to understand the distinction between the emotional uh, uh, elements in the message and the rational elements in the message. So, the, uh, the, so this ability to distinguish emotional and reasoned reactions when responding to uh, content is a very important element of media literacy. There are certain messages when they come to me, they outrage me and I'm forced to you know, either tweet about it or to write a Facebook post or to 
post about it or to argue with my friend or my uh, acquaintance on Facebook, so on and so forth. So uh, those re responses could be emotion responses or emotional responses. So I must be able to uh, realize that there are emotional responses which have been triggered by a particular message or which have been triggered or, uh, or I have been made to react like that. So a lot of content on the uh, uh, social media platform, Twitter, for example, is because people are angry about certain things. And probably one reason why the Facebook has uh, uh, refrained itself from uh, using the uh, dislike button because they do not want a lot of negativity. But again, there are emotional reactions there where you, when you post something, you keep on checking the Facebook post that how many people have liked it or how many people have uh, res responded to it, so on and so forth. So that's a very important uh, uh, thing to understand. And then there could be reason reactions or there could be uh, where, where you're not using your emotion, but where you're using your brains to uh, react to the uh, message. It could be a persuasive message about uh, buying uh, uh, food which has uh, high protein or whatever. But uh, the ability to understand that there could be emotional reactions or there could be reason reactions is an important uh, uh, power to have. And also the ability to enjoy, understand, and appreciate media content. If you are somebody who's not at all uh, willing to even uh, consume media content, then probably media literacy is is, is uh, 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 not not possible because you know the uh, ability to uh, you know appreciate media content is very important, or or to as I we used it in terms of access, but to enjoy content, to appreciate content, and to understand that content. And another very important thing is the knowledge of the genre convention. So whether this is in the documentary genre or whether it's in the humor genre or, or whatever genre. So it's uh, you will be media literate when you are able to understand these different genre conventions. So when we see, uh, say, for example, people... Uh, 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 you know, standing and and you know, presenting the news, we must understand that uh, okay, there there is a point of view here, or whenever uh, there, there is a there is a, a, a graphic or whatever, we must understand that you know they are uh, going to talk about uh, uh, numerical information there. So this ability to recognize what are these uh, genre conventions, and often these uh, genre conventions are mixed. You know, in television news, for example, they use a lot of uh, elements from uh, uh, the the, the uh, film language, for example, to create a certain kind of response. It could be, you know, some kind of a musical background, or it could be using a slow motion content, or by using different camera angles to emphasize or de-emphasize something or whatever. So this knowledge of uh, genre conventions is very important for a person uh, to be media literate. And also uh, the ability to think critically about media messages, no matter how credible their source is, wherever it is from, the ability to re-verify, the ability to uh, reconfirm that why is this message coming and is it is, is uh, there something missing there? Is it is it uh, does it make sense? Does it add up? So so many things to understand. So not being uh, totally closed. Okay, this is from from uh, 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 BBC, so it has to be very good, or it is from uh, uh, the Dawn, so it has to be very good. It it has to be. Uh, uh, irrespective of what uh, uh, credibility the uh, media sources have. It's about uh, being critical at all times. And I keep repeating uh, these three C's of uh, journalism uh, always. Uh, one is about curiosity, the other is, is, is creativity, and the third is criticality. So, so it's being uh, critical about, uh, critical in the sense of trying to analyze uh, uh, what are the uh, possibilities there? So critical does not always mean in the negative sense of, of criticizing those things, but to uh, see uh, uh, the, that with an analytic bent of mind. And also the knowledge of the internal language of various media and the ability to understand its effect, no matter how complex. So that again is very important. And uh, many of us, uh, you know, who are aware of, of the language of uh, cinema, we understand how or uh, you know what what a particular uh, transition would mean, or what a particular uh, movie would, uh, or what what a particular lighting would mean, or what a particular uh, camera angle would mean, and even uh, you know so for uh, uh, Twitter content and for uh, you know other kind of content on for for print media as well. Just by seeing something which is having a, a, a you know a banner headline, we understand uh, the uh, impact that they are trying to create or. or uh, to uh, uh, emphasize. So in, uh, this knowledge of the internal language of the various media is an important element of media literacy. 
So I'm just trying to uh, summarize all these points one again, once again. So the first point is that all messages are constructions. So they are constructed by authors. So it could be one person, it could be an institution, it could be many people. And these messages are constructed because of certain specific purposes. And they make use of specific production practices and specific uh, ways of constructing a meaning. So it's it's uh, uh, from uh, from the side of the creator or from from the side of the producer. This is how messages are constructed. They have a specific purpose and they have used certain techniques to emphasize certain things or not to emphasize certain things. In the framing uh, class also, we spoke about how certain things are emphasized and certain things are not emphasized. The second important thing to understand here is that audiences are active in the meaning making process uh, so uh, they uh, make uh, sense of the text in the view of their own lived experiences so it is not something which is a given it is something that they construct for themselves so the audiences construct meaning for themselves uh, different forms and genres of communication they make use of specific codes of uh, convention and symbolic form so as, as i was just su suggesting different uh, genres they have uh, uh, different uh, 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 different uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, strategies that they employ certain codes that they employ so that that realization is very important and also certain ideologies and certain value systems are conveyed in uh, media messages and uh, that uh, also follows from fiction for example so if there is violence uh, in a story, the author will never condone it. He will always or he or she will always be condemning it. So when we watch uh, a particular media content, for example, we must understand that there are certain value systems, certain ideologies that they are uh, representing in that, that kind of a, a media uh, a content. So these are not always, uh, they are not always, uh, 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 you know, free, free from uh, any, uh, uh, they are, they are not uh, uh, neutral in that sense. There are uh, certain uh, uh, ways in which uh, these uh, value systems are being represented. And uh, um, these uh, media messages, the media industries, and these technologies, they exist within a larger cultural, historical, political, economic, and regulatory framework. So there is, a, I mean, if, if, if we have a media industry in India, it, there is a particular historical, cultural, political, economic, and regulatory means uh, how the media is regulated. If it is in another South Asian country, Bangladesh or Pakistan, for example, there could be some different context. If it is in a Nordic country, there could be different context. If it is a Britain, for example, there are different contexts. So these media messages, they're always within that kind of a context, within that kind of a framework and that is something we have to understand and just to uh, emphasize once again that uh, all messages have a point of view whether you like it or not or whether you're aware of not they always have a point of view and it it, it, it could be about some universal values but they always have some uh, values there so they, these messages reflect the motives of the agencies people who are involved in production of these ideas and media literacy is important because media literacy contributes positively to the process of democratization because in a democracy the the real power is with the people and people uh, uh, and, and the judgment that these people make and that the people can make correct judgment only when the sources of information uh, that they have uh, you know provides them with with a rounded information and if the source of information itself is a uh, 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 faulty then the judgment that people make or or the uh, 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 you know the the support or the uh, or the opposition that people show will also be vitiated. So for true democracy, it's important that uh, people are media literate. They can uh, see through the power that the media has in these uh, kind of situations. There are two uh, theories there uh, 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 which are very often used by media literacy scholars. I'm not going to get into the details of uh, the theories, but the first theory is the inoculation theory. So if you are aware of uh, the, the fake messages right from maybe your uh, classroom environment or these uh, uh, environment, when you are out there and if you are exposed to these messages, you will be empowered to uh, take care of that. And again, another thing is about, you know, the message interpretation process or the MIP theory. So this suggests how different people interpret the different messages. So if you are aware of these uh, processes, then probably the decision you make or the decision you take following the uh, media content uh, that you consume will be different. So the, these are some of the theoretical uh, inputs for that. But uh, uh, 
uh, again to, to go back to the um, uh, media literacy paradigm so first of all what is the what is the process in which the media messages are uh, 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 you know constructed what uh, so whether whether they went through the normal journalistic way of verifying or whether it is somebody's own opinion or whether it is uh, so from some agency or whatever so first of all what is the process of construction of these media messages second the context in which these messages are produced as well as consumed so the first talks about the process of the construction of the messages the second part the context in which they are produced and as well as consumed because the meaning is not only from the side of the producer but how the consumers make that meaning so that's very important the structure of the messages themselves, which are the elements which have been emphasized, which are the elements which have not been emphasized, which are the parts of the messages which are more salient, which are not salient, which are the elements that are not there in the message. So the structure of the message itself is important and the production values, whether uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a professionally produ produced content or whether it, it's a, a just uh, so, some, some uh, raw content or whether it is a maturish content or whether it is a, a content by by some uh, agencies to uh, try and uh, push across uh, certain points of view so that uh, is important to understand uh, one uh, of the reasons that uh, we come across in a lot of uh, media literature uh, media literacy studies is that uh, most of the times uh, they talk about the bad influence of the media so uh, a lot of media literacy attempts are about that you know media can have bad influences and how do we uh, protect people from the, that uh, bad influence so one of these things could be simply as stark as you know whenever when when somebody is smoking on the screen uh, uh, in a cinema or, or or in an advertisement immediately you'll see a message flashing down there that uh, we do not uh, uh, support this kind of a thing and this is just only for dramatic purposes and smoking might kill and so on and so forth so the idea is that the moment people see this kind of content they might be influenced to copy uh, that kind of a behavior and uh, uh, media literacy must be some kind of a protective arrangement from uh, that kind of a situation uh, again uh, let me uh, talk about these three different elements in the uh, um, uh, you know process of construction of media messages and you know uh, how people draw meaning so there are three different people involved there are three different entities involved there one is a producer of content it could be a software producer it could be you know content it could be a media uh, or it's about you know people who create messages it could be a political party or a, 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 a corporate agent or whatever there is there is a user and and there is the media so there are these three uh, different entities and there is a, a there's an interplay uh, between these three entities in the uh, construction of uh, messages and the meaning people draw from these messages so we must understand these four processes of uh, uh, interplay between these uh, three entities the first is about how the media influences the producer himself so whoever is producing content maybe a filmmaker or it could be uh, somebody who's uh, presenting something on screen or somebody who's talking or somebody who's in the part of an uh, election campaign or whatever they're always influenced by uh, by by the media portrayal of events so uh, anybody who's producing content is always under the influence of media because we are uh, you know a lot of these messages are uh, are mediatized we are uh, consuming uh, uh, a lot of information that media plays out and our our sense of reality is uh, based on how media views that or how media uh, portrays it so uh, the producer uh, himself or herself is uh, always uh, influenced by the media uh, content itself then the second part is about the uh, influence of the producer to the media because the stakeholders who you know produce this media content they have a very important impact on the media industry itself so uh, if if if, uh, if all the uh, uh, print media organizations and we know a lot of it is uh, uh, very uh, kind of uh, uh, located under you know uh, or, or it's condensed to uh, you know very few entities so maybe uh, 10 or 15 or 20 organizations can have access to uh, uh, lots and lots of uh, more than 50% of of media circulation or media re readership so the kind of uh, uh, content that they create or the kind of content they come out with has an influence of the media itself because the rest of the people will be following that and one of the things that people keep on talking about media when when they talk of news values and things like that 
is that uh, news values is something or news is something which my competitor is doing so once somebody comes up with a certain kind of uh, 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 way of constructing media content many others think that that is a formula that works and people start following that so uh, that is a uh, the second process in this uh, uh, trio the second uh, the third is about how the media influences the media user so how we uh, consume content is uh, often influenced by uh, the the media institution itself and finally how we handle the media or how we negotiate with the media whether we uh, uh, consume content with a particular bent of mind or what are the uh, uses that we put the media content to and that's where the uses and gratifications uh, uh, concept also comes in that what are the gratifications you draw from the media so it's not always you know media imposing content it's also about people making use of the media uh, in in uh, many cases so these four processes are very very important there and finally if we answer these five key questions we would uh, be answering most of the uh, important elements that i have spoken about media literacy so far so what are those uh, five key questions the first is who created this message who are the people behind the message who are the real people who have created this message it could be about social media content it could be about a lot of the content that we consume on whatsapp and we forward without reading it so uh, that's about uh, very important who are the people behind the message who are the producers who are the promoters of the this content what creative techniques have been used to attract my attention so is it uh, 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 is it some kind of a music is it some kind of a, a example that they're trying to set is it some kind of a storytelling technique they're trying to suggest and it's very very important to understand the uh, 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 importance of storytelling in this way and in another video as i've said i've, I've spoken about storytelling but uh, I, I just want to emphasize one point here that when we uh, are reading a story or when we are watching a story or when we are consuming some kind of a story we are inside that story we are feeling exactly the same things that the protagonist there feels because we identify with the hero or the heroine there so those creative techniques are used to draw me inside the story and make me either feel happy or angry or sad or outraged or whatever so uh, i must be able to uh, see through the techniques that are used to attract my attention in these messages and these are that's a very very important uh, thing to understand thirdly how might different people understanding uh, understand this message differently from me i have been uh, i know about these techniques because i am a media student or i know about these storytelling techniques and so on and so forth but how might other people understand this message from me and that's where uh, you know the first part where i spoke about you know uh, media literacy must also allow me to create and disseminate content also so when i have something like that or when i understand that people are uh, using these techniques to uh, uh, mold them in a particular manner or to mobilize them in a particular manner then uh, uh, i must be aware of that that how might that uh, influence people who are uh, who are uh, who, uh, who might have a different uh, skill sets compared to me and that's where the third person effect again you know uh, is reflected here what lifestyles values and points of view are represented in or even omitted from this message so uh, very often and it was in the last 50s when daniel lerner and all these people they had their own notions of uh, modernity they were promoting a certain kind of a western lifestyle or promoting a certain kind of a libertarian view or uh, 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 promoting certain kind of a new liberal kind of a view or whatever so these are just examples i'm trying to suggest so there are lifestyles there are values there are points of views which are represented in or uh, maybe even omitted from that particular message and finally why are they sending the messages that what is the possible reason that this message could be sent or why have they decided on uh, uh, propagating these messages so if we are able to answer these uh, five questions uh, clearly then uh, we are we are on the uh, right path to uh, media literacy and as i said uh, media literacy is a very important tool to uh, which which uh, empowers us to be uh, active uh, consumers of content So with this I uh, finish this presentation thank you very much